ULA launches its second certification flight with a twist. At Starbase, the IFT5 hardware is ready to go. In Europe, PLD Space is presenting an ambitious plan to dethrone Ion Group. Several rockets were launched this week, despite SpaceX Falcon 9 flight restrictions. I'm Christophe Paget from All About Space, and this is your Space Update. ULA has finally launched its second certification flight of its new Vulcan Centaur rocket. This rocket was designed to reduce launch costs and maintain a healthy market share of its lucrative military satellite launches against the likes of SpaceX with its Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, as well as soon to compete Blue Origin and its new Glenn. The second flight test was important to take place now, as ULA has two US Space Force launches contracted early in December this year, the missions USSF-106 and USSF-87, both with a Vulcan version consisting of four side boosters that ULA do not want to lose for SpaceX, as already done recently. The flight took off on Friday the 4th of October at 11.25 a.m. UTC. The rocket ascent was achieved by two BE-4 engines from Blue Origin, which worked flawlessly, and two side boosters, for which one of them suffered an anomaly, where we could see a piece of it ejected during ascent. These side boosters has worked, albeit with a larger plume than his neighbor, but ran out of propellant slightly earlier than planned. The side boosters and the center core were separated without issues. One hour and 18 minutes into the flight, the center upper stage fired for a third time, sending it into a heliocentric orbit to test how it would behave in long missions, such as those required to send payloads to geostationary orbit, but had to run his engine 20 seconds longer to compensate for his side booster issue. The flight was deemed by ULA a total success, paving the way for the next launches and therefore paying guests. Strangely enough, the FAA has reviewed the incident on the side booster and deemed it not necessary to investigate further, which I must say surprised me somehow when compared to other recent incidents. Tell me what you think in the comments below. At Starbase, SpaceX have installed a load simulator to simulate the peak load of the booster during catch attempt on the Mekazila Tower number no. 1. The Starship number 30 has now been restacked onto Booster 12. Both vehicles have also undergone a short wet dress rehearsal and a day later was even destacked. You might have heard some noise about the possibility of integrated flight test number 5 to occur as of October 13th, but I will not speculate until the FAA is providing the flight license to SpaceX. At the Massey site, the booster number 14 was transported to the Massey site and underwent cryogenic loading testing of both its methane and oxygen tanks. Some more salvaged parts from booster number 11 were transported back to Starbase from the Gulf of Mexico. And here is the Aftome. The Spanish startup PLD Space has announced its long term ambition to become a European powerhouse. Indeed, Back in October 2023, PLD Space successfully launched his Mura 1 rocket, setting it on a strong footing to build his Mura 5 rocket capable of sending one metric ton to low Earth orbit. Mura 5 is a two stage conventional rocket running on bio kerosene and liquid oxygen with five Teprel C engines on his first stage and one on his upper stage. Its first stage will be reused based on parachute landing and marine assets for picking it up from the water. Building on this rocket, PLD Space has this ambition to push the boundaries beyond Mura 5, inspired by SpaceX Falcon 9, 
with what it calls Mura Next, a larger two-stage rocket capable of sending up to 8.3 metric tons payload to low Earth orbit and up to 2.9 metric tons to geostationary transfer orbit with five larger engines on its first stage, still running on biokerosene and liquid oxygen with a rocket height of 60 meter. His first stage shall be reused too, but based on the same principle as a Falcon 9 with landing legs, landing on a vessel or returning to site expected by 2030. It then intends adding two first stage Mura Next as side boosters to call it Mura Next Heavy by about 2032. PLD expects to carry up to 16 metric tons to low Earth orbit and 7 tons to geostationary transfer orbit. Their aim does not stop even here. They intend to expand to four Mura Next side boosters with an extended fairing size and a rocket height going up to 67 meters tall, for which they call Mura Super Heavy, with an impressive payload to low Earth orbit of 53 metric tons or 23 metric tons to geostationary transfer orbit and even 13.7 metric tons to Mars orbit. All that by 2033. A colossal ambition for such a startup. But the ambition does not even stop here. They also intend to develop a human-rated capsule called Lince, Spanish for Lynx, capable of sending four to five astronauts or five metric tons of payloads to the ISS. They expect to start drop testing by 2025 and use Mura 5 as the test vehicle to do flight testing by 2028 from Kourou. What an impressive ambition by PLD Space. October 4th, ULA launched the second certification flight of his Vulcan Centaur from Florida, as already mentioned. October 7th, SpaceX has restarted just for this one his Falcon 9 launches with his mission HERA from Florida. The first stage flew for the 23rd time and was expanded due to mission needs. The second stage reached up to 43,000 km per hour speed thanks to the first stage push to finally release the ESA satellite HERA on his interplanetary transfer orbit to rendezvous with Dimorphos. On October 10th, CSC launched a Long March 3BE for his mission Gaogui 3 from China. In summary, from January 1st until October 10th, 2024, 185 rockets were launched successfully. Out of that, 114 were from an American company or institution and 46 from China. I'll leave you this week with a James Webb Space Telescope image of the open cluster Vestalund 1, a space firework located roughly 12,000 light years away in the southern constellation Ara. It was discovered in 1961 from Australia by Swedish astronomer Bernd Vestlund, hence the name. It is so far unique for its large, dense and diverse population of massive stars, being relatively young, 3 to 5 million years old, and is likely to evolve to a more globular cluster with more than 1,500 supernova in the next 40 million years. So one must be patient in astronomy. I'm Christophe Paget for All About Space. See you at the next episode of Space News.